Did Sir Francis Bacon have a heart attack while trying to unlock a chastity belt? Did Clark Gable have bad breath? Did Raquel Welch have silicon shots? Find out the answers to these and other important questions right now on that awful quiz show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and those of you who are still undecided, from Hollywood, the town where Carol Burnett won an almost million dollar judgment against the National Enquirer. Here are your hosts, John and Greg Rice. Show. My brother Greg and I travel around the country a lot, and sometimes people don't always know who we are. And those who do sometimes can't tell us apart. That's why we never leave home without these, our American Express cards. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, that's mine right there. Don't leave home without them. We've got a terrific show for you tonight with some wonderful guests. We'll be right back to meet the world's female Frisbee champion, and the president of the Flat Earth Society. And I guarantee you'll have no trouble telling them apart. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Hal, would you introduce our first two guests, please? John and Greg, I'd like you to meet the world's leading professional Frisbee champion and the president of the Flat Earth Society. Here are Miss Laura Engel and Mr. Charles Johnson. Welcome to the show, both of you. Thank Mr. You. Johnson, do you mind if I call you Charles? Perfectly all right. Laura, do you mind if I call you tomorrow? <laughs> Laurel, what made you get into the Frisbee? Well, um, I started playing in New York City where I grew up. And when I moved to Los Angeles, I didn't know too many people. And it's real hard to meet people out here because everyone stays in their cars. So uh, a friend of mine from New York came out and said that he was going to play Frisbee with a group of people at the beach in Venice and if I'd like to go. And I went down there and I started playing. And I really loved it. And I still do. And I made friends. <laughs> Well, how old were you when you began competing seriously? Well, I started competing when I was 17, and then I really got into it when I was 18. And what about school? I'd already finished with high school, and I was going to uh, junior college, and I had to quit, drop my classes. So well, wait a minute, you compete. quit school to play the Frisbee? To compete, yeah. Oh, well, I could see quitting to play professional baseball or basketball or, or be a jockey or something. <laughs> say about all this? Well, my mom, she's a psychotherapist, psychoanalyst, and she diagnosed me as nuts and said, <laughs> and said, uh, she was really disappointed at first, but then at the World Frisbee Championships, which are held at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, where I won uh, the overall and all other titles, when she stood there next to me and there was 50,000 spectators and they were giving me a trophy, uh, she was proud and she went running around saying, there's my daughter, there's my daughter. Laura, is there any money in being a professional Frisbee player or, you know, with the contingencies or endorsements or whatever? Well, yeah, there's... um manufacturers of sporting goods things and they give you money to compete at tournaments and give you merchandise and things and also they'll pay your playing fare to the tournaments and you advertise by wearing their t-shirts and um i was told i make a great billboard oh, well, who, who told you that john did before the show <laughs> other than my brother has anybody like Playboy or any of those magazines ever offered you money not to wear a t-shirt? Someone called me who said they were from Playboy and asked me if I would pose um, in their magazine without anything on. And um, I'm a little shy, so I didn't want to do that. But um, he called back a few times and kept calling. So uh, finally I said, well, I'll do one semi-nude for about $50,000. And he never called back. 20, so. 40, 60. <laughs> As president of the Flat Earth Society, was there ever a time that you thought the Earth was round? No, I'm, uh, I'm one of those people who've never been brainwashed my entire life. <laughs> if the Earth is flat, then what's on the bottom? 
<laughs> no one has the faintest idea. In fact, there may not even be a bottom. <laughs> well, when you look up in the sky and you see the, you know, the, the round sun and the round moon, how do you account for all that? You know, it hasn't got a thing in the world to do with the shape of the earth. It's like stepping into your room at night. I mean, uh, you, you step in on a flat floor and you turn on a round light and you think, my God, the floor must be a ball. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like light bulbs, then who turns them on or off, or who changes them? Well, <laughs> didn't Christopher Columbus set out to prove that the world was round to a world at that time who believed the earth was fl uh, flat? Absolutely the reverse. He set out to prove that the world was flat. <laughs> Up at, at that time, mind you, in 1492, for over a thousand years, it was believed the world was a ball. And this is why people thought you couldn't sail far out in the ocean because you'd go over the edge and Charles, fall off. But he, he was a Jewish chap who had common sense and he knew, he knew the world was flat. Charles, Charles, have you ever discuss your theories with, let's say, the United Nations or someone like that? The United Nations is established on the fact that the world is flat. But their symbols, their symbols are... Wait a minute. The United Nations, remember what the symbol of the United yeah, Nations it's, is? Yeah, it's round, right? No, no, it is flat, and it is a silhouette of the Flat Earth Society map, I can assure you of that. Why isn't it that, uh, generally accepted that the world is flat, or the because, Earth is flat? Because crazy Christians. <laughs> Insane Christian. It is a doctrine of the Christian religion that the world is a ball. But of course it is not. It is Charles. a religious superstition to believe the world is a ball. Right. How many members are in your organization? There's around 1,800 members all over the world. Are you married to any of them? I'm, I'm, I'm married to one of my best proofs. Born and raised in Australia. She sailed on a ship across the flat ocean to get here and she testifies and swears and has on affidavits. She has never hung by her feet underneath the world a day in the world. She herself is proof. She's been in Australia. Charles, Austra they call Australia down under. That's what they And say. the reason that the people down there don't fall off is because of gravity, right? Well, even if there was gravity, which they're not, it has nothing to do with the fact they'd still be you hanging by their feet. You don't believe in gravity feet. either, Charles? They'd be hanging by their feet head down. Or, what do you mean? If there's no gravity, how come when we get older we start to sag? <laughs> gravity. <laughs> Charles Lord, it's been very educational talking to you both. Now let's see if you can get together and play, win some money playing that awful quiz. Okay, As a team, go. you'll have $500 to start. You'll be asked four questions. You'll be able to bet between $50 and $200 a question. You'll have only eight seconds in which to give us your answer. And at the end of the show, if you have more money than any of the other guests, you'll come back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question sent in by a viewer. And the first category has to do with geography. Why do some people sag? <laughs> No, 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 the first, the, first question, the first question has to do with geography. How much would you care to bet? Well, what do you say, start with a hundred? Hundred? Hundred is nice. Okay, for one hundred dollars, which of the following cities was voted the worst city in America to live? Was it Bayonne, New Jersey, Perth Amboy, New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey, or Jersey City, New Jersey? Which one? What do you I don't know which is the worst. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pick one. Time's up. Time's up. Question. Answer, Jersey, please. Jersey City, City sounds good to me. Jersey City. That's exactly right. According to a U.S. quality of life report, done in 1970, the worst city in America to live is Jersey City, New Jersey. You now have $600. Your next question will be about health. How much will you bet? Two. Two. Go for it. <laughs> for $200. According to the U.S. Department of Health, in which one of these states would you be most likely to get syphilis? <laughs> I don't write them, I just read them. Would it be Rhode Island, Michigan, Florida, or New Jersey? Well, all right. Uh oh, we have to decide. Okay, yes, yes. give us your answer. Uh, Florida, 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 right? That's right. <laughs> according to a U.S. Department, according to the U.S. Department of Health report, it said you'd be most likely to get syphilis in Florida, the home of Anita Bryant. <laughs> you now have eight hundred dollars, and your next category is movie stars. How much will you bet? The limit's two. Limit's two hundred dollars. <laughs> what does it say? Two? two. Okay. Great. For two hundred dollars, which one of the following stars admits to having had silicone shots? <laughs> Was it Raquel Welch, Jill St. John, Anne Margaret, or Jim Neighbors? <laughs> 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 
Who was it? Jill, Jill St. John. Jill St. John, maybe? I don't know. Okay. I'd say Jill. Time's up. Oh, Anne he Margaret. said Anne Margaret. Okay. Anne Margaret, that's exactly correct. During a performance in Lake Tahoe. Yeah. <laughs> during, a, during a performance in Lake Tahoe, Anne Margaret suffered a serious fall with, and she had to have facial reconstructive surgery, which required silicone. Oh. You have $1,000. This is your last category. Your last category has to do with screen lovers. How much will you bet on your last question? Two hundred. Two hundred. Seems to be good. For $200, Clark Gable was the king in Hollywood, but one of the stars who played opposite him said he had bad breath. <laughs> who was that lucky star? Was it Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind? Was it Ava Gardner in Magambo? Spencer Tracy in San Francisco? Or Marilyn Monroe in The Misfits? Who was it? Marilyn Monroe, but I'm not sure. Okay. Who was it? Okay, we'll go with Vivian Lee. That's right. It was Vivian Lee. Yeah. Yeah. In her autobiography, she said she didn't like to do love scenes with Clark because he wore dentures. And evidently, Clark didn't drop him in pollen every night. And Clark said, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Why, yeah. Charles? You've ended up with $1,200. You may have a chance to come back at the end of the show for a shot at that $1,000 awful bonus question if you have the most money. So thanks for being here. You've been a delight. In the meantime, thank you. We'll be right back with more of that awful quiz show. <laughs> Gentlemen, here are a professional laugher and a one-man band. Say hello to Ann Shala and Dick Winslow. Welcome to the show. Ann, I presume you're not the one-man band. Uh, no. Well, as a professional laugher, exactly what do you do? Well, I've been known to sit in audiences uh, because comedians want me there to make sure the audience reacts to their humor. Good. How much do they pay you? <laughs> well, it averages. Uh, well, let's say we start at 100. It, it varies depending on the show. Start with 100. I think I can handle that. Um, <laughs> what's the toughest job you've ever had, Anne? <laughs> well, I did a Christmas special in Germany. And... Um, uh, the Germans are not <laughs> notorious for their ability to laugh. I had facetiously said to the producer, ah, people are the same the world over. Well, what was the guy's name who hired you to do this? Uh, his name was Peter Alexander. Isn't that a bit of a contradiction in terms of German comedian? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. He was an Austrian. Well, that's what they all say. <laughs> Well, has there ever been a time when you should have been serious, but for some reason or another, you know, you laugh like at church or a funeral or something like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to uh, one of my first funerals out here at... Uh... Wait, wait a minute, you weren't funerals, too? <laughs> <laughs> this was a courtesy call. <laughs> at any rate, I, uh, this was a funeral out at uh, uh, Pheasant Lawn... Uh... Forest Lawn. Forest Lawn, right. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Ray Bolger was the MC, and oh, that's, you know, no, 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 the uh, eulogizer. And uh, the guy next to me, <laughs> he said to me, I'd like to introduce you, myself to you. My name is Fido. Of course, my next question was, and what's your dog's name? <laughs> Dick. Yes. What inspired you to become a one-man band? What inspired me? Right. I was both inspired and chosen by an old friend of mine, a genius named Walt Disney. Walt went to London to make the arrangements to make Mary Poppins. And over there, he took pity on a busker, a British busker, which was a one-man band, a street entertainer who was kind of being picked on. And he immortalized one-man bands by writing this one-man band into the picture, Mary Poppins. And when they decided to have a real one-man band at the premiere in 1964, 
waltzers. If anybody can play all that stuff at once, get Dick Winslow. Dick, tell me, how do you like working at Disneyland? I like it very much. I'm also appearing now at Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> well, tell me, are there any hazards to your job, working with tourists and children all day? Funny you mentioned children. I have three children of my own, and one night I did a very unusual thing, a very nutty thing. I came home thinking about my daughter who was just taking off to go to college, and I swallowed a watch. You what? I swallowed a watch. What kind of watch? A Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Didn't have a strap on it, but I kept on the kitchen sink where I could look at it very often. One night I came home, talked, thinking about my daughter, and there were a bunch of pills and little cups there. I'm, my wife's a nutritionist. So I gulped and, down and these pills. And you're into watches, right? <laughs> well, I gulped down these pills. I pride myself on taking them without water, and I gulped them down, and something seemed to stick right here. What happened then? Well, I went to a nearest uh, emergency hospital, and they said, drink a lot of water and go to bed. I couldn't sleep. I bought a trampoline, bounced up and down for a few weeks. <laughs> I, I is, lost... is this it right here? That's it in the x-ray. Hey, look, right. it, it, it looks about like half past your kidney there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of wine do you drink with watches, Dick? It's a big joke right that... now, but believe me, it could have been very serious. Let me ask you this. How did you ever pass the time that day? <laughs> Okay, well, Dick, it's been nice talking to you, talking to you both, and looking at your x-ray, but I see by the old clock in your tummy that it's time to play that awful quiz. As a team, you'll start out with $500. You'll be asked four questions. You'll be able, be able to bet between $50 and $200 a question. You'll have only eight seconds in which you give us your answer. And at the end of the show, if you end up with more money than the other guests, you'll come back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question sent in by a viewer. Your first question happens to deal with former movie stars. What will be your bet? 300. Uh, you can only bet 200. Only bet 200. 200 is the maximum. Oh. 200. 200. 200. Okay, we feel good here today. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> movie star Lupe Velez. Former movie star. Oh, yeah. Former movie star Lupe Velez. Oh, I see. Yeah. Committed suicide. <laughs> Was she found drowned in her swimming pool, drowned in her bathtub, or drowned in her toilet? Bathtub, I'm sorry, but she was found drowned in her toilet. According to a book called Hollywood Babylon, she had taken an overdose of pills along with a Mexican dinner. She got sick, went in the bathroom, and passed out while leaning over the toilet. It's called Roto-Rooter Revenge. <laughs> you bet about $300, your next category is about famous people's love life. How much will you bet? Go for 200 <laughs> 200 For $200. In a recent issue of a paper called The Hollywood Star News, one of the following four famous people was not called bisexual. Was it... Sorry about this one, Dick. Was it Walt Disney? Was it Elvis Presley? Was it Bella Abzik? Or was it Marlon Brando? Who was it? Oh, oh my. No, no, no. Uh, my. Marlon Brando. I'm sorry, but it was Bella Abzik who was not on their list. Walt Disney? Who would say something like that about Walt Disney? Whoever would say something like that about Walt would have to be some queer duck. Okay, and Dick, you now have $100, and your next question has to do with inventors. How much do you care to bet? What? Inventors. How much would you care to bet? You have $100 left. Oh, how many more questions? You have two, two more questions. Two. I'll bet 50. <laughs> You're recovering for all For $50, how did English inventor Sir Francis Bacon meet his maker? Was he killed in an explosion trying to invent a flushing toilet? <laughs> Did he die trying to stuff snowballs in a chicken? Or did he have a heart attack trying to unlock a chastity belt? Or did he move to New Jersey? It's worth 50 to find out about the last one. The last one. And Dick, I'm sorry, but you're $50 poor. He died stuffing snowballs in a chicken. Now that's some queer duck. According to scientist and author 
Isaac Asimov, Sir Francis Bacon was trying to invent frozen foods and got pneumonia stuffing snowballs in the chicken. Okay, Ted Vick, you have $50 and one question left and it deals with ancient medicine. How much would you care to bet? Should we go all the way? This time we're going to go all we're the way. We're going all the way. That's, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. For $50, Dick, this might be right up your alley. Up my alley. According to the Book of Facts, in ancient Greece, dentists prescribed one of the following as a sure cure for the toothache. Did they tell their patients to stick a carrot in your ear, <laughs> stuff an olive up your nose, or stuck a mouse in your mouth? Which was it? Olive up your nose. I'm sorry, but they told their patients to stuff a mouse in their mouth. Dick, you must have noticed you when you me a clue, yeah, yeah, you must have noticed when you swallowed Mickey that you didn't have a toothache. <laughs> and Dick, I got a headache now yeah. with that record. And Dick, you didn't you didn't wind up with any money, but you did end up with a lot of valuable information. We want to thank you so much for being on the show and play that awful quiz. And we do have a consolation prize for you: some pills. And a, and a Mexican house. dinner. That's right. That's so, 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 so thanks for being here, and we'll be right back right after this. Please welcome back our winning couple with $1,200, Laura Ingalls and Charles Johnson. Besides the $1,000 bonus, what else can they win, Hal? John and Greg, if they answer the bonus off a of question correctly, they'll also win an all-expense-paid vacation to Puerto Vallarta. They'll fly first class on Mexicana Airlines and spend 10 days at the Lux Hotel Camino Real. This question was sent in by B. Arnold of Jersey City, New Jersey. <laughs> you don't believe me? Poor guy. <laughs> For $1,000 and the trip, good luck. When David Beagleman, current president of MGM, was president of Columbia Pictures, how much did he plead no contest to stealing? <laughs> was it $30,000, $60,000, or $120,000? Which was it? <laughs> such big money. Well, seeing as how the movie business and such big money, we'll say $120,000. I'm sorry, but according to the Wall Street Journal, Beagleman pleaded no contest to stealing $60,000. I wish he was a bigger crook. <laughs> well, you didn't end up with a biggie, but you do end up with $1,200. We've enjoyed having you on the show. You've both been great guests. Thank you so much, and good luck. And remember, folks, Thank you. that when going down the road of life, just try to look at the bright side of things. If you ever have a flat tire, just be thankful that three of them stayed up. Thanks, and we'll see you later. Thank you. If you would like to have a question asked on that Awful Quiz Show, send that question plus a source verifying it to that Awful Quiz Show, 915 North La Brea, Hollywood, California, 90038. If we use your question on the air, we'll send you $25 plus an Awful T-shirt. <laughs>